Tuesday, everybody. It's What Chaos on the All City Podcast Network. DJ Bean, Pete Blackburn. Hi, Peter. Hello, David. This is an episode during which we are on assignment. Not during, not the recording part. As you're hearing it, we are on assignment. So we're recording it late Monday night. We got the Oilers on the TV if anything crazy happens, we'll be the first to let you know Tuesday at noon. You'll hear here live. What <laughs> happens in the Oilers game. We have Jeremy Swayman and Lena Solmark together on the episode today. We recorded this a couple weeks back. So we're not going to talk about trade rumors or anything with them. Trade rumors with them is ridiculous. Anyway, now we know that in having Lena Solmark and Jeremy Swayman together, it only furthers the idea that this is a Bruins podcast, which we have said it is not a Bruins podcast. We're not beating the allegations. We are beating in al the allegations because we're not a Bruins podcast. Fuck you. We are such an Oilers podcast. We are. You I can't mean, be a Bruins podcast if you talk Oilers 97% of the show so far. It's, it has stunned me that nobody's complained about how much we've talked about the Oilers so far. It's been every episode. They want it. Now we're watching the first game uh, at the studio. Mm. Of course, it's an Oilers game. Feels right. Connor McDavid scored. Leon Dreisaitl scored. The Oilers are winning by multiple goals. Stuart Skinner let in one bad goal, but has since not let in anything. I mean, are the Oilers galvanized? They might be galvanized. I mean, probably my three favorite Oilers have scored. That's that's right. The, the big two plus I'll, Connor McDavid. Exactly. Although, you know what? One of my favorite Oilers is probably Darnell Nurse because... I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know. I can't always say that. like... You can't say that because all you talk about is, is Zach Hyman and obviously Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Zach, so Zach Hyman is possibly my favorite oiler right now, which is crazy because uh, famously I discovered Leon Dreisaitl. <laughs> you kind of did. Nobody knew who you... You know you what? You talked about Leon Dreisaitl before I knew anything about Re Leon Dreisaitl. I, Sneaky was a little early uh, for people who were obviously going to be superstars and everybody was going to know their name. I, as a joke, decided to be obsessed with Jason Tatum <laughs> and I kind of, as a like pro Peter Shirelli joke, decided to be obsessed with Leon Dreisaitl. Both worked In out both very well. In both those cases... They're incredible, but I'll always be a Darnell Nurse defender because it's sort of like defending the goalie that gets maligned. Mm -hmm. If you defend the overpaid defenseman, it's telling the casuals, they're like, look, I understand the game a little more than you. Yeah, he's overpaid, but that's all you're going to talk about is contracts. Cool. I'll talk about what matters on the eye. Oh, he had a bad, he's not playing well. Shut up. Stop fucking talking about that. Stop uh, to talk about something else. This probably won't be an Oilers heavy episode, yeah. but we do have some items that we have to hit on with regards to the Oilers. Number one is uh, Chris Knobloch, who was appointed Oilers coach over the weekend, took over for Jay Woodcroft. Mm -hmm. um, somebody on Hockey Reddit by the name of Anal Crusher uh, pointed out. What does that mean? <laughs> That's just their name on, on Reddit. Uh, they pointed out that the Oilers have an ongoing streak of penis-related names of their head coaches. And they, they came with evidence, of course. You have Ken Hitchcock, Dave Tip Pitt, Jay Woodcroft, okay. and now Chris Knobloch. So all of the their last four coaches... 
have had dick related slangs included in the uh in their names. So I thought that was kind of going to be a bit of a force and that like, oh, well, that's just cuz you're looking for it and if you look for it, you could always see the dick joke in anything. Yeah. Tell you what, <laughs> I pulled up the rest of the NHL head coaches. I'm a pretty uh I can see and read into things as well as the next guy due to my uh, blessed ADHD, but I'm not really seeing any dick things <laughs> in any of these other guys' names. Uh, yeah, there's famously n no coaches in the NHL. None of them got dicks. Let's see. No dicks across the NHL, just the Oilers. I'm really not seeing... Here's my question to you. Do you think that Claude Julian would have gotten the job if he was named Cho Julian? Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> There is not a, uh, yeah. There's nothing. Bruce, well, Cass Bruce Cassidy has ass in his the name. The oil, the oil is a really highbrow podcast. Cornering the market. Yeah. Uh, my my takeaway from Chris Knobloch, his first day as Oilers coach, is just I didn't know what he looked like, and he looks like a perfect combination of, of Lloyd Braun, Matt McCoy. Yes, he looks like Matt. But that's who I have pulled up on my computer really? right fucking now somebody Look. on twitter said it to me they were like that's lloyd braun i was like that is very yeah it yeah. looks exactly like him and connor roy which is uh I, what's uh what's uh that um his real name just had Shoot. a car accident i know uh, damn it I'm uh, sorry that, day out. god he's such a famous uh rock uh jesus fucking we're recording this extremely Sean, late at night you got any 3 help for us we're recording rock this uh, Rick Astley, uh, <laughs> Alan Ruck, Alan Ruck, Alan Ruck. I nailed That's it. That's pathetic. That is a friend tough. of the podcast. Listen, Elliot we're on Friedman the tail end of a back to back. If we're talking about hockey terms, yeah. But uh, I that did prompt me. Went back to the Chat GPT Good. to generate some AI imagery, and I said, "What would it look like if Lloyd Braun was the coach of the Oilers?" And I typed that into chat GPT and it gave me this. Hit me, hit me. And that, that looks like Ted Lasso. That looks like Ted Lasso getting a blowjob from an Oilers player. Yeah, there is a, the, the, we're not that kind of podcast, I, I but know, there is for sure oral sex in play in this it's, AI it's picture. It's unbelievable. Also, what is going on with the benches? <laughs> it's crazy. There are benches everywhere. <laughs> it's crazy. There are I, one, two, three, four, and a, I see four and a half benches. Well, I love the. Everybody in the audience is white. Number nine. <laughs> What's going on? Number three. Number 98, interestingly, the one doing the, the act. And then there's just like the person with the Oilers logo on their back, like a, in a <laughs> yeah, ticket. Uh, what? They just don't get a number, I guess. That is the. There's not an empty seat in the house. Also, I like mean, no one has gotten up to go to the bathroom or anything. Show. It, and there, but there's nothing on the ice. It does appear that everyone is also watching what is going on uh, between the coach <laughs> and the player here on the bench. Then it's no a wild. And I and I sent I sent Sean the like the screenshot of my prompt so, yeah. to make sure Can that confirm. there was no funny business going on there. And like the it spit the image back to me and it was like here's what you asked for and here's the coach who looks like lloyd braun uh getting i think quote actively engaged on the bench and i was like yeah it sure does look like that is there uh so we just found out about chat gpt like four days ago <laughs> is there a uh, has, has it been like infiltrated by uh the the ranch is there a thing where like it takes like a Stephen A. Smith hard left turn and just suddenly makes whatever you're asking very horny? I don't think so. I think that was just like maybe a glitch in the system or it just it picked up on the trend of Oilers coaches. Hmm. I mean, the thing about AI is it's smarter than all of us. It can grab information from everywhere. Yeah. Maybe it saw the Reddit post and was like, we got to involve. This is going to be topical. We got to yeah. involve the D in this. Hmm. I wonder if you asked uh, chat GPT to generate what would Stephen A. Smith's podcast, not his show, his show, he is locked in, giving everybody the business. It's his podcast where he, he just makes everything. His podcast Hornville. solely exists so that he can be horny. So he can post social horny clips on Maine. <laughs> yeah, it's all so he like, does. If what would it, that show be like if he couldn't be horny? And I, I mean, I do he, like that he leans into sponsors. it. He leans into it so hard and he like takes fan questions and they're all like, what's the best day to be horny? And he's like, I, 
I've been waiting for you to ask. He has such, I mean, it's Stephen A. Smith, so everything is extremely well thought out. But my God, we were kicking around before the, uh, the old podcast taping. Jeremy Swayman and Lena Solmark, by the way, on today's show. People forget that. Uh, what is the better conference, the Eastern Conference or the Western Conference? That's not the way we would, that's not the, just the conversation. Is we it were hockey's having. biggest rivalry? No, the conversation that we were having is what's the cooler conference? Oh, right, 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 right. Like the better conference. Sorry means if I accidentally presented that hockey. as like a hockey question. Yeah, no. No, what's, what's the, the cooler, cooler conference? Yeah. It is like miles Western Conference. Okay, so I said West. You hadn't given an answer. I thought that you were maybe sitting on a here's why it's the Eastern Conference. No. It is. So, the only cool thing, and I know that I was mocking this when we were talking about it before, like the Metro is kind of a cool nickname mm -hmm. for a division, but if that's all you got, Shania Twain voice, don't impress me much. I want to go on the record and say that I'm an East Coast or an Eastern Conference guy. You're an Eastern Conference yes. guy? Like, well, I mean, like technically we're all Eastern Conference I know. No, guys, we only watch Western Conference. I'm the Conference. only one here brave enough to ride for the Eastern Conference. I haven't watched a single Eastern Conference game since we started this show, <laughs> unless the Leafs were playing. I only watch the Western Conference teams. I come in here and I break down the Kraken on the fucking daily. I'm giving you Coyotes takes. I'm coming hard with Ducks fodder, obviously the Oilers. I could go on and on continuing to name teams in the Western Conference. I just don't have the time. The Western Conference is just way more chaotic. Um, and as, the Oilers are in it. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, like, in general, I think it's a little bit more chaotic. Uh, I think that it's a little bit more open. It's a little bit more psychotic. Um, it's definitely more north-south in terms of the style. And, like, that, that just makes it a way cooler conference. It also probably has most of the biggest stars hmm. in in the game right now. I mean, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Oilers, obviously, Bedard. but like Nathan McKinnon, Bedard, uh, just like a lot of headliners out there. And yeah, I just, I just think that it has a little bit more of an edge to it. And like the Eastern Conference is more heavy, methodical, surgical, hmm. whatever you want to call it. But it's, it's definitely less cool, but probably a better product. So in a bad way, the Eastern Conference is the adults table. Correct. You yeah, have yeah, Sidney Crosby. Yeah, yeah. You don't anymore, but like you had Patrice Bergeron. Mm -hmm. You had like to a lesser extent, like you had your David Krejci's. You have your John Tavares. Like yeah. you would just have defense. The like grown up. <laughs> you have the people who play defense. Like you, you have good goaltending. Yeah. It's a lot of grown ups. You go to the Western Conference. Hoo wee Like, the bars are open past two in the Western Conference, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. Crazy and, shit. And we were, we were having the discussion before the show, too, that um, I, I really want to – I really want to play up, like, Eastern Conference versus Western Conference. That's, that's, that's truly hockey's biggest rivalry. Yes. We're going to make it the biggest rivalry in hockey. Whenever we talk about any game, such as the Islanders and the Oilers, tonight – You'd say, oh, what's it a matchup of? I don't know. Similar uniforms? No. This is East versus West, baby. This is for all the marbles. It's interleague play. Yes. And every and if you're a fan of, like, say, the Montreal Canadiens, you know who else you like? The Boston Bruins. The Toronto Bruins. Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins. And you have to root for them. Because you're all rowing you in the same direction. You have to root direction. for them. We're all on the same team here. Did uh, you ever do that stupid shit of uh, when your team got eliminated in any sport where you're like, well... I guess I'll root for the team that's in the conference or like the like, oh, my American League team got eliminated. I guess I just hope the American League can win the World Series. Did you ever do that shit? No, I People feel like do that's, that. More of do a, that. that's more of a I want to I want to have lost to the champion. to the champion. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. Which I can't get behind. I if you beat me, if you knock my team out of the playoffs, no, you're dead to me. If I mean, so the Florida Panthers famously went to the uh, Stanley Cup final last year. There are. Three teams that should have been kicking themselves that whole way of like, oh, uh, not the, let me think. So they fucking dra they barely got past the Bruins. Mm -hmm. They beat the Leafs pretty convincingly. Yeah. And then they, did they smoke the Hurricanes? Yeah, they swept them. They uh, unless you talk to Rod Brindamore. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. But so like uh, the Leafs and the Bruins should be kicking themselves. Like, like, if only we could have gotten past them. The Leafs could at least, like, convince themselves they could have made it more of a series. The Bruins, obviously, no guests of today's podcast withstanding. Like, if I had this playback, if I could have done this or whatever, yeah. which is always an unfair thing that players do. But players, 
do that. It's a very timely breakdown of last year's playoffs for sure. <laughs> Why? What happened? No, I'm just saying I, nobody's talked about it yet. Not on this podcast. <laughs> That's but right. The I want to have lost the champions thing doesn't no it work doesn't doesn't register unless for me. they killed you, unless they absolutely so the the hurricanes are okay to be like ah oh, well at least we got embarrassed by the team that was really good. Bruins, Leafs, they ought to be pissed. I'm pissed at you on a Tuesday because uh, Joe Biden had the uh, old Knights in town, and I assumed I could just coast Mr. Internet over here. It's going to have all the funny things that happen, the screenshots, the videos, and you're like, nah, Biden was boring with them. I mean, we call me Mr. Internet when we spend all day together now and like we're that is neither true. one of us that is, influence. <laughs> neither one of us internet. is really scouring the internet. But I will say I was disappointed to to get on Twitter uh after we finished the show yes uh I guess earlier today. And I, I was like, Biden must have done something crazy. It said something wild, kind of like fell asleep while they were, one of the players was talking or something. Mm. Maybe he fell down. <laughs> he happens to do that quite often. It, it Hockey players fall down. That's true. I don't see you making fun of them. <laughs> I make fun of them all the time. <laughs> yeah, I do see you making fun of them. Um, yeah, but it seemed like Biden kind of Biden kind of crushed that uh, that whole ceremony. He he had a couple funny lines. He they gave him like a, a like a hockey stick, and he went to go hold it and was like almost fell over. It was like this is like eight hundred pounds. A so hockey had, stick? Yeah. A modern hockey stick. No, a one-piece like, it, composite no, stick. No, it was like a metal, like, it was like a trophy hockey stick. I was going to say, I would love to watch Jack Edwards <laughs> watching someone unable to lift a hockey stick when Jack Edwards <laughs> repeatedly and correctly will note that these one-piece composites these days, especially with some of the flex, like, have you been seeing any of the stills of, like, players taking shots? Yeah. It doesn't make sense no. how those sticks stay in one piece, which no they idea. typically don't. They break all the time. But like, if you see some of like the the whip that some yeah. of those sticks have, is crazy. It would have been really funny though if Biden was like, <laughs> "How oh, funny, damn! <laughs> how funny would it be? You guys if they, really swinging the lumber out there." <laughs> they just like hand him like a like a regular stock like CCM stick, and he like just holds it and falls over. <laughs> who do you think real Joe, heavy? Who do you think Joe Biden's hockey team is? Hurricanes, the Philadelphia Flyers. Blah, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. But I was like Delaware. The one, the one, uh, the one part of the the press conference or ceremony or whatever where he did go a little off the rails. I Good. saw he's just randomly started talking about the Eagles and was like, "Don't let, don't let the Eagles go anywhere." And everybody was like, "The hell is he talking about?" I thought you were saying like he was talking about the band, the Eagles, and that would have been an, the ultimate dude's rock moment. <laughs> so fucking it's 2023. I'm president. And the and uh, fuck, what are they? The Vegas, the, the Golden Seals come and they visit because they'd won the bean pot or something like that. And like, I don't know these fucking guys. And I'm just like, you know what? I was listening to On the Border last night, and like one of the guys there totally fucking knew what I was talking about. <laughs> Dudes rock. Uh, another big Oilers goal. Uh, Evander Kane scored. It's all happening. Who's Everybody's left? getting. Oh, okay, he scored on an empty net, but I mean that's a step in the right direction. Stat the Oilers doesn't Stat help. Us. Not not fair. <laughs> Should have had Stu Skinner take it. Would have been would have been uh, second goalie goal. The Ol other guy on the podcast has a goalie goal. Olmark style. There's a. There's going to be a lot of stuff you're going to be seeing on the socials from this conversation we have with Olmark and Swayman because uh, they are hilarious. Their bond is incredible. The first answer that they give, none of it is tightened or edited or anything. It's just like we're being dry with them and they're just game and they're incredible. Uh, they are such good bros and uh, also the Bruins are so tight. That as we were going into the Olmark Swayman interview, Swayman was like, hey, let's get Lauko in here too. <laughs> oh, that yeah. That did happen. <laughs> yeah, that did happen. Uh, people want one of them traded, by the way. People want the Bruins to trade one of them. Some of it is a Bruins fans thing, but some of it is a fans throughout the NHL and media throughout the NHL wonders, like, if a team needs a goalie, might one of those two be available and could you pry them from the Bruins? I think really, really, really no can't happen. A, their contracts are such that Swayman is 
on a one-year deal, went to arbitration last year, but he's going to have to be the guy long-term. He's been the better player so far between the two of them. So I think the Bruins eventually think they're going to have to transition into him being the guy. So he should be off the table. And why, when last year shit hit the fan for them, when they didn't properly rotate them in the postseason, would they say, okay, now let's take away our biggest strength, which is goaltending, and turn it into just kind of a regular... Like, a lot of teams have one really good goalie. Yeah. And the Bruins aren't good enough at center, and they've had moments where guys like Campus Lindholm haven't been amazing, where like the one thing they definitely know they have is goaltending. It would be ill-advised and I think unlikely just given the way that Don Sweeney thinks that they would actually trade one of them. I can understand the 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 conversation from like an asset management standpoint, but I also think that you have to look at it realistically from a, like a team, like a roster construction standpoint and whether you're trying to win right now. And it appears that the Bruins are trying to win right now as they should be because they just keep winning all the regular season games. <laughs> yeah. So you may as well try to, to make a run and win right now. And m my argument to any of that, the goalie trading questions is just who are you going to get back that makes you a better team and like better position to win right now? And the answer is you're not going to, you're not going to get a deal that, that makes that happen. Unless like somehow you convince the Oilers to give you Leon dry side or dry side or something. And even then, uh, like, I'm not saying that that's, that would be a bad trade or anything, but I don't necessarily know if it makes the Bruins a better Stanley cup contender this year. I think it, it definitely does, but even that's impossible because dry saddle makes eight and a half million right. dollars. And Olmark makes five, Swayman makes 3.4, something like that. Just that you can make the money work. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying, that like they, they should be afraid to change the one certainty they have. Yes. They just fucked up how they handled the certainty last year, which I don't totally blame them for sticking to the mindset of you rotate during the regular season, then once you get to the playoffs... You ride one guy, especially when the guy that they chose to ride is the Vezina winner. So, right. like, obviously can't get on them for that. It eventually became clear, okay, maybe you spell one of them and you go to Swayman. And by the time they did go to Swayman, like, Swayman was good in Game 7. Yeah, I mean, it just wasn't. It was just too late. Like, it was to have him one game. I, don't th I didn't think that he was, like, the problem at all in that Game 7 by any means. But, you know, it, it it's... Past us now. Interesting time I, I, to I break think, down last year's playoffs. Yes, tough guy. I think that if you are, I think if you're the Bruins, you want to see what this tandem gets you in rotation in a playoff run. So At you think they've once. learned the lesson there? Yes. I think that uh, yeah. Montgomery, 100%, whether it's Montgomery, whether it's Neely, whether it's Sweeney, like someone has decided there. Okay. And it's not like I, I've, we're in Boston, so. Uh, we've heard enough of the people who don't want them to rotate and we've heard all the arguments of like, so if the guy gets a shutout in game seven or in game six, it, like you just start the other guy in game seven. Like, no, you do what you would do like, normally during the regular season right. when one guy is a going really well. A rotation doesn't mean 50, that you 50. have to go back and alternate every single game. It's you, you ride the hot hand and then... You know, if you have an opportunity, like the Bruins did when they were up 3-1, mm -hmm. to get the other guys some work with a little bit of flexibility, you take that opportunity. Yeah. So. Here are the boys. Here's Jeremy Swayman and Linus Olmark. Do you guys miss each other during games? Yeah. During games? Yeah. Well, I can always look over to the bench and see him. I mean, when I'm sitting on the bench, I can look on the ice and get lost in his eyes. But you can't be with him. I mean, spiritually, we're there. Long distance relationship. <laughs> yeah, if you want to say that. Jeremy, you're awfully quiet. Do not miss me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, yeah I, I miss him. But uh, I think we have those TV timeouts, so that's easy to do. And like we have our rituals, right? So um, I thought of a bunch of jokes last year. So I was preoccupied during games. And he told me to think of jokes. Remember that? Mm -hmm. There were some dirty ones, too. Mm, bad <laughs> so, ones. Yeah. A little joke book on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just stuff that we kind of do to 
keep each other, you know, engaged and not engaged. You know, yeah, some yeah, because sometimes you get a little bit too focused, like too zoned in, and you gotta mm-hmm. like broaden your horizon a little bit, and you know, doesn't matter if it's letting three or four goals. Sometimes it's just you know gotta keep playing and. No, sometimes it's better to have a little bit of laugh about it than, you know, be sour about it. And we know each other that sometimes when you get to the bench, it's better to just be quiet, let the guy just do what he does best. And then sometimes you want to you know, try to force him into talking, mm-hmm. basically, and try to open him up and, and uh, you know, relax a little bit. I love if one of you guys, like, faked a... Like an equipment issue or something, what so you, you have faked? to go over fake uh, an equipment. Just Please. an excuse. You're a goal. Like skaters fake everything. They dive. They do all these various things. So if you just like faked an equipment injury and just like kind of did that over and then got to the bench and was just like, just kidding, buddy, and then went back, <laughs> it would probably make his day. Well, we had, we did have a shout out together that day. That's right, we did. Yeah, that was a that's, wee thing. That's right. That's a wee thing. Kind of cool. Uh, it. You know what else is a wee thing? You guys. This one. Guys. This one. <laughs> Look how small, Just a small guy. boy. Uh, oh, <laughs> you thought yeah. we were making a penis joke? Yeah, no, oh, no, no, no. It's something. This is a PG okay. show. Pizza I small. Marshander earlier he made a <laughs> penis joke. So yeah, Marshander made a yeah, penis joke day. about me. Not yeah. much. Uh, why are you guys friends? Goalies typically, if they're fighting for one spot, there should be a little fight there. Obviously, you two being friends has worked very well. But why are you such good friends? Start me. Yeah, I can I can start. I think yeah. it goes down to kind of a personality we are. You know, we grew up in the kind of same of a no environment. He's from Alaska, I'm from northern Sweden. Kind of the same thing, yeah, if you think about it. Uh, small cities or towns even. Uh, my wife always said that I grew up in a tree because there's only 300 people in where <laughs> I grew up. But, you know, and, you know, the personalities for ourselves are very carefree, loving guys that just loves being around the boys and... Mm-hmm kind of figured out when we start talking obviously i reached out to sway uh when i signed saying that hey this is what i feel that we need to be you know be doing i'm gonna try to push you every single day but i'm still gonna be back up in your corner uh if you're the one playing and he's just responded very well to it and from that moment i knew okay this guy is gonna be something special and but i couldn't know that possibly we're gonna be you know best friends on the team but that uh, kind of, you know, when we met each other and we had that little uh, bonding trip down to, where was that, with the team? Uh, First season. Yeah, down in the Navy Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, after that point, like, yeah, this is, yeah, I can go to war with this guy. Sealed, right? Yeah, I think he nailed it. I think, um, you know, as soon as he signed, he shot me a text, and I thought that was, you know, huge. Because obviously being a younger guy, it was my first full year going in, and... Um, you know, just a lot of unknowns, and I was really excited. And now to have a new teammate, and uh, obviously a goalie partner, I, I've always really enjoyed. You know, getting to know my teammates on a personal level, and goalie partners. You know, as we all know, it's uh, it's just kind of a different element of of a friendship you need because again, we we know there's only one net, but we understand that it's a team game, and there's 82 of those. You know, and so it's going to be a shared position, and we want to do everything we can to help this team win. And um, yeah, I mean, the first time we hung out, it was an automatic brothership, friendship. It was it was so seamless, and, um, you know, it, it just goes beyond the ice, too. I mean, he allowed me to come into his family. Uh, you know, I'm basically the third kid, you know, <laughs> and it's so special. Yeah, you're Uncle Jeremy now. Yeah, kids as well, so, <laughs> so yeah. it's just been really, really special. And, you know, my dad's the same way. Every time he talks to me, he's like, how's Linus? You know, I'm like, okay, I'm, do- I'm doing all right, too, Dad. You know, <laughs> it's like one of the – it's so special to, to share that, you know, and – uh, it's definitely developed into you know more of a family environment thing rather just a friendship. I say this with all due respect, but goalies are typically pretty weird, weird mm-hmm. guys. Mm-hmm. What's the weirdest thing about the other guy? About Sway? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna keep, to I'm gonna keep that illusion of. The, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna I, tell. All right, what's the weirdest thing about you? Weirdest thing about me? Yeah. That he agreed to do this interview. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> weirdest thing about me? Well, uh, I don't. I'm not the one that should say that. I think that's someone else's. You should talk to my wife about that. What's <laughs> yeah, we would know most. Yeah, she yeah. she knows every dark 100%. secret. <laughs> I don't know much, man. You got. Hey, you're in a tough position now because he wouldn't say the weirdest thing about you. I don't. Now. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like you got great style. Like that would be. It's like weird to me because I don't have good style. 
So like, it's <laughs> like I I ask him for style advice. You know, it's like his the, suits are unbelievable. The vest in a suit was yeah, unbelievable. It's silly. So. No, it's not weird at all. It's fucking sick. So, yeah. Are you superstitious at all? Because you change your goalie mask and, and set up more than any goaltender I've ever seen. I just like changing it up. You know, uh, I'm starting to get to that point as well now when I don't really want to change because I'm getting, um, how should I say, it? like, I don't have any more ideas. <laughs> like, in the beginning, it was easy. Um, uh, but now like last year I wanted to just do something simple and then for this year I'm like, oh my god, do I have to come with something new again? But uh, we, we just talked about it, me and the Bauer guys and I'm like, yeah, you li- just, just tilt the stripes. <laughs> just, just tilt the stripes <laughs> and just keep it. And it's, it's one of those things as well, like you want to be recognizable at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have the marbling on my past, which is something that only I do. So I'm probably going to keep that for the rest of my career, basically. Um, and then... For the centennial ones, I think I put down a little bit more effort into that. But those things are kind of easy because then you have like a third year jersey and you can come up with new stuff and you're not going to wear the stuff for, I don't know, 40 plus games. You're just going to have them for, what is it, like 13 games mm-hmm. when we use the third year jersey? Um, so it's a little bit easier at that point. How much do you care or pay attention to jerseys or uniforms? Because it's like, I mean, you guys have to plan around that more than anybody else on the team. You've definitely started to like think more about your gear yeah you've changed parents. my life yeah i, <laughs> yeah, I, I, do, always... I have that uh, unfortunately that's both a good and a bad thing yeah like i make people aware of what they're doing actually sure yeah i've, I've never made more changes to my gear ever because uh, i was always just like a stock guy you know i was just like uh whatever matches whatever makes saves yeah i don't care but it's been really special to kind of talk shop with you and and go through the things that you know can help us in different ways because the game changes you know and um, you know, when you started and I wasn't born yet, uh, it was, you know, you're wearing these pads. <laughs> wow. <that> shots fired. <laughs> That's shots it was, fired. It was uh, wearing different pads. And, like, it's amazing to see these changes and, like, um, you know, you being on top of it has opened my eyes a lot. And it's definitely helped uh, help my game and my perspective of everything, too. So mm-hmm. let's talk about the hugs. Uh, Jeremy, I saw in an interview you said you've been hugging your goalies since college. I like hugging. Do you guys yeah. ever talk about that, or is it like a hey, like it was before I met you? It's it's cool. Oh, there's nothing nothing else like it, man. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely. I don't know. I didn't expect it to grow into what it is today. I got sent a video from South Korea the other day. No kidding. Yeah, two goalies hugging it out. Really? It's out of control. It's like one of the most incredible things that. Again, you know, we just thought it was going to be. It's just a, a hug. joke, right? And it's just a hug, but it's it's really not, man. It's uh. It's amazing to see the camaraderie and the hockey world really taking it by storm. And, um, you know, I think it's just like a deeper meaning, like what we didn't realize at the time, but mm-hmm. now we do. And especially with youth players and and uh, junior players, even uh, just seeing that uh, just friendship and and truly a celebration of how hard it is to win. Yeah. And also you got to touch his base on like the human aspect of it all. Um because you guys said it as well, like there's usually a, lot, a little bit of a fighting mm-hmm. and you have that competitiveness towards each other and you might not like the guy because he's getting more starts or something like that. But what we kind of agree upon is that if the other guy is doing well, most of the times the team is going to do well, which makes that when it's my time mm-hmm. to shine, the team's going to be playing you know, with a lot of confidence and it's going to be easier for me to play well. So if you start being sour, that's just, it's going to show. And, you know, it, we know it, like we're around each other every single day. So if you're going to be sour every single day, no one's going to be want to be around you. Mm-hmm. But if you're happy, cheerful, and, you know, supportive, people are going to, you know, follow the tracks and follow mm-hmm. your uh, follow you. Did you ever see the uh, the tattoo? I've seen a couple. couple. The tattoo couple yeah. from, uh, from last, uh, I so saw it, like cool. this, uh, during like right before the playoffs, yeah. that one. Incredible, that was man. Awesome. So I never thought I would make it to I a tattoo. <laughs> we got like at least four, four or five running around now. Like <laughs> it's insane. Better for yeah. that than for something else, though. Right? Yeah, right. yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's it's good work too. So uh, yeah. who who throws a better hug between the two? Who, who do you think is <laughs> me better? Have, me in between. I don't know. It's just changes every. It does. It gets a little different every time. Well, head on the wind. I'm to to be fair. I've have not gotten a warning yet from the medical staff, but Sway has. About yeah. his hugs. What? Wow. About coming, like lifting or, or like coming hot. Yeah. Coming yeah. hot. Yeah. Wow. So it was. I th- that was actually when. Yeah. That was when I scored. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I mean, if there's hot. ever a yeah. time. But yeah. he, it, I understand them as well because, you know, they don't want us to... Oh, actually, we there's a sick picture of us jump hugging in <laughs> Buffalo. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, back to back shotsies, yeah, and then good, all of a good. sudden I came in hot as well like because I, I, I told yeah I told you like <laughs> if you do it one more time I'm coming hot yeah and we got solid fifteen inches <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like, like so hot like, <laughs> <laughs> what um, did the training staff say yeah, they just like chill training. out like, yeah like yeah they the asked more, us to not jump basically. more flying okay. hugs and what what would you fucking do like would you come in and be like hey uh, it's not what you think but I think in the second period, I like hyper extended both of my shoulders, right, and it's yeah. just like from go- clearly <laughs> yeah. from going like this. Yeah, yeah toe picked on my way in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which is not what we want. Yeah. He mentioned the goal. How bad did you want a goal last Incredible. year? Incredible. No, I've. It's coming. Like I'm no yeah. doubt about it. You came it, close like a couple times, it but fun. it seemed like you really wanted it, of especially course. after he got. Oh one. yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's gonna get probably three more. You know, so it's like. It's so cool to to see it in person. So I've seen one hole in one and one goalie goal in real life now. You know, so um, I haven't done it personally, but <laughs> I want to. So it's just like really cool, and yeah, it's a moment that you never forget. So uh, it'll come, and I'm gonna keep working at it. And so is he. It's gonna yeah. be awesome. We talked about the good stuff. What's the what's the most your relationships ever been tested? Once we got no. sent down, and you took a fika bun, the last fika bun, from me. At the table, we were talking, we were fika and it oh, was, yeah. you, I wanted two, and you took one. That was a bad <laughs> No, it wasn't. <laughs> you know, What's you know, a fika? I was going to say. Yeah, we just said, we, so, back <laughs> home, Swedish thing. obviously, Swedes, yeah. we, we do love our fika. We basically, you sit down, have a coffee and a pastry, and you shoot shit. Okay. Yeah. Like, kind of like what we do now. We, we, when, but we just need a coffee and pastry. And it, it's like, you just relax and enjoy life, basically, and... Try to implement it and Swayze just fully bought in. And mm-hmm. he does that. And one day, actually, we had one extra s- cinnamon bun that my wife made and he loves it. And I just kind of <laughs> snagged the last one and he <laughs> was eyeing it for a while, just being, you know, a, you have to be a polite, mm-hmm. be a very polite one. And I just said, As a host, you have to be polite too. Mm, but he's so, sneaky. He's just, but I mean, come on. You, I didn't get mad. I was just like disappointed. No. <laughs> <He's so laughs> you were disappointed that <laughs> it was in my belly and not yours. Uh, Jeremy, you play guitar, right? Yep. So I went to come up with a fun guitar question for you. And I went to Google Jeremy Swayman music. And I was tired. And I accidentally Googled Lena Solmark music. Nice. And the first thing that comes up if you Google Lena Solmark music is a playlist you have called Rawr, that is over 24 hours long, <laughs> has a shitload of fucking songs. And honestly, he was over. I was going through it. I was like, I told him about that? it. We laughed about it. And five minutes later, I was still scrolling through. I was like, I'll tell you what, bud. It's a pretty solid playlist. <laughs> yeah. But it's got some, I think it's got some Nickelback on there. It's got some Paramore on you there. You can just basically see the transitioning from me being a 16-year-old kid to now. <laughs> that is so funny. Do fun. you have like one playlist that you only do? 24 dump hours. No, that's long. basically where I throw everything that I can't just, you know, okay, this is a solid rock song. Like I have a... <sighs> How much can you swear on this podcast? Yeah, well, however as much, you much want. there's okay, like two so words we don't so, do anymore, but yeah. So I have um, so I have a playlist called nothing uh, nothing for pussies. <laughs> okay. Basically, so it's if you look at my hat, it says blah. So yeah. it's death metal stuff like that, okay. very screamish kind of thing. So that's where I put like all those sort of songs. But then I have like a very relaxing one. So I like, try to sort. I like to have lists where I, I know exactly. And what kind of a mood I am. Yeah. And I use that. So for the raw one, it's basically just random. Everything kind of goes. Uh, and that's been, that was my first Spotify playlist. And I, <laughs> was 16, I just kept it's with it. The uh, one you figure, the one that you couldn't figure out how to make private, apparently. <laughs> because so it's, if you funny. Google it. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, I use my mom's Spotify, so it doesn't matter. Do you really? Yeah, nobody's going to find mine. <laughs> <laughs> Why? That's Guys, awesome. just sign a new ticket. So yeah. has this mom's Spotify. It's great. I don't get why Nickelback gets as much shit as they do. Like, a lot of popular bands are yeah. no lamer or softer or whatever than them. Anyway, uh, but yeah, Photograph was on there. and you That's were, just classic, but... So good. Of course. San Quentin is a great song. Yeah. What other song tells you to look at this photograph? <laughs> I can't think of any. I just love the meme when they just erased the look photo at this, and just yes. look at this graph. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dude, you should use that. Like after, if you guys have like a good month or whatever, or one somebody gets like player Look of the week graph, or whatever, gold ring above average. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at this graph. That's actually gold. I'm gonna put him on my helmet. The next helmet. Oh please. Holy graph. shit, dude! If one of you guys oh, had yeah. Chad Kroger a holding up a back, graph, that would be all time helmet. Yeah, I like that. And I really don't want there to be any explanation for it. Like, how can you explain that away? Yeah. But I, I would love for one of you at some point to have. Yeah, Chad like Kroger. That. He's you know what it is? He's holding up the graph and then the graph is silhouette. your face. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. What's we'll the weirdest it... thing you've ever put on a mask? <laughs> 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 Jesus. No, there's nothing really bad. Uh I've had a lot of masks. I think my my favorite one was the Bowser mask back home. Mm-hmm. So mm. it was just Bowser all over. That's funny. But then I had there's this so there's, I think there's a French old cartoon where there's basically a, a stick figure on a line, and they used to call him Lean, <clears throat> Lean is on the line in Swedish. So I just used him all of, on my mask all over. So I think that's probably the the weirdest one. Um, I think, but also having, even like this year, having Taylor Sagan on <laughs> one of the sides is also like making a guest appearance. It's a little oh, weird. Yeah. But I also have Marshy. So yeah. kind of Pe- up people love it. that. I saw Twitter was going crazy for the fact that you included that on the mask. So yeah. one last question, because it always fascinates me with goalies. It's like a legitimate hockey question. What's like your ideal night in net? Because I know a lot of guys like to get a lot of work mm. to stay locked in. Like, what's your ideal night in net look like? You remember what we talked about last year or was it like two years ago? What? At least a windmill per period. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> Ideally. Ideal. Yeah. <laughs> But like a natural windmill. Exactly. Yeah. You just like, touch the sun and then you just yeah. come back slow. Yeah. Full split. It has to be. Yeah. We get fired up about that. Yeah, we do. Um, I get fired up when you even though when you do splits because I can't really do splits. <laughs> so I used to lose that. my mind whenever he does like a <laughs> sick split save. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. But yeah, just a lot of shots, I think, ideally is like shots early. And, uh, you know, just something that keeps you in the game. Mm-hmm. And then... Yeah, a couple ten bellers aren't bad. So, yeah, I think the game that I had against Calgary last year is probably mm-hmm. like the best sort 60, of a game. Sixty shots, yeah. Um, you're letting in goals, but it, like you're, right. it feels like when you're done and you really felt like, okay, if I wasn't this good, we probably would have lost with six mm-hmm. one or something like yeah. that. When you can feel I'm like sure. you ten to one, but yeah, <laughs> but then you feel like you actually made like a big difference mm-hmm. because sometimes when you're playing a game. You just stop in pucks, and you know you don't feel like you're doing anything except for your job. But then mm-hmm. sometimes you feel like, okay, I was a difference maker today, and that was one of those games when you when I really felt okay, I had a heavy influence on this game. And you like to have that, but not you don't want to have that every night. You don't you don't want to be the only you know only solution to or the cause of winning or losing. Mm-hmm. But we're in a position where <laughs> most of the days I was going to say are, there's not many games that you can't <laughs> yeah can't hide. Yeah, we're always. Kind of that uh, center of attention. That's why we love it, though. You know, it's it's cool to just. That's why you get so excited for each other when you win, man. Because it's like such a hard league to win in, and when you do, it's uh, you want to make it like you've been there before. But it is. It's something you look back. You know, take five minutes. We always talk about it after every game. You know, we go up to each other and just be like, "Hey, like this about it. Great game. Move on." You know, and that's that five minutes that you feel good, and then take the positives, and move on. So that's yeah. something that uh, we definitely take seriously, and as you should, man. We work hard. Lastly, I will say, like, you guys are the goalies in Boston that Boston loves. Boston was so fucking mean to Tuca. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's, it's very refreshing to see that there is, like, a great two-way relationship uh, mm-hmm. between the goalies and the fans right now. Yeah, but I never I never understood why. Never made sense. Yeah, never made both, sense. Brother. I hated yeah. playing against Tukes. Mm-hmm. Of I, course. I, I think I, nev- I never won. I never won a single game against <laughs> Uh, I won one game against Boston, but he was backing up that game. So I never won against him, and I hated going against him because it was Stud. like, how can I beat this guy? It's just the lazy thing to do is play, blame the goaltender if the team loses. So yeah, it's, sure. it works for a lot like of he fans. Was the, he was the one of the top five goalies every single year. Preaching yeah. the choir, yeah. buddy. Oh, the, the, there was times in Boston where he'd be like a daily radio topic of like, can they win with Tuka Bowl? And literally at the time, Tuka had the... All time highest save percentage ever. It was like mm-hmm. him, Hashik, right. and like a couple other guys. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's great that you guys do the shit you do and the people fuck with it. So thanks for coming on, guys. <laughs> thanks for having us. Well yeah. said. <laughs> All right, got the playlist. And 
He still he's still adding to it. He added two songs by Illenium. Do we know who Illenium is? Yes. I've heard the name before. Yeah. What is it? It's like um it's like a DJ, I That's believe. That's what I assumed. Yeah, yeah. And if I see uh a musical artist that the name is all caps, yeah. I assume that it's, there, uh, it's some hits though. A DJ. But yeah, this playlist, the first song on it is Misery Business. Okay. Heat. Rock on. Super bass. Incredible. Coast to Coast. I never really knew much by Sammy Adams. Sammy Adams was huge when I was in college. He was popular for like 45 minutes in New England, right? But he's still big in the hockey community. He, uh, he did uh, a wedding over the summer. I That's believe right. that he did uh, Kevin Hayes' wedding. Yeah, it was some Boston. But it was, again, it's all I think New it was England Kevin people. Hayes, and that was the one that where uh, Johnny Gaudreau was on shoulders. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Sean, resident Paramore fan, do you know the song Monster? Um. Yes, it's from the Transformers soundtrack. Yeah, I've definitely nice. I've heard it. That's this is on. So the Linus added these, by the way, in 2012. I feel like I'm doxing the poor person. Well, but, he said he was like, you can see me growing up. Yeah. as I was adding these. Fifth song on the playlist, "Photograph" by Nickelback. <laughs> that song had been out for a very long time by 2012, and do he you, was just like, I appreciate this good song. Do you think the songs that he added after our interview, because our interview uh, happened, uh, yeah, no, a the, while he, ago. he added songs after. Yeah, but do you think when he added them, he was like, I, I know DJ's gonna see these. Probably. He's like, <laughs> Probably. I, I, I know I got DJ patrolling my. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I followed him on Spotify. Well, I don't nice. know what's going on. I don't follow anybody on Spotify. I didn't even know that you could follow people on Spotify. Uh, Never too late by Three Days Grace. Okay. Uh, sale by a wall nation i mean everyone banger that was like 2012 yeah the whole damn year 2012 is still happening now because of sale what else uh he's got some bob on there he's got some daughtry he's got again yeah you you do get it there's some drake make me proud i really i kind of i'm really interested in the nothing for pussies playlist now that I, one is private i can't yeah, get to know it. i know but it's like, can you slide in someone's DMs on Spotify? <laughs> I'm gonna DM them on Spotify. Be like, Linus, Dave, hit I feel me like, with that uh, NFP playlist. I feel like the Bruins fans are gonna be like, are gonna be. There's gonna be popular demand for the Nothing for Pussies playlist. Yeah, didn't uh, make the interview by the way, but I did tell him I had a very big metal phase. Mm -hmm. Know all the stuff that you're talking about. Any earlier stuff that you're talking about. I was called that word all the time. <laughs> word is a just, it is what it is. Yeah. So I, I would not say that just because you listen to a certain genre of music, you are not that word. Because I was listening to that music all the live long day and playing hockey. I didn't go in the corners. I don't want to <laughs> get hit. Uh, Overall takeaway from that interview, both those guys rock. They are dudes rock kind of guys. All I want in my life before I die is to to Fika with Linus Olmark. I want to Fika very badly. I, I was googling. So hard. I was googling Fika. Seems like I I didn't see. I'll be honest. I didn't see Fika as a verb. I was only seeing I love it, it as a noun, and it was like this type of bun. They're Fikaing. Yeah, I like. It sounds like having like a spa day, except you're yes. sitting down and having coffee and treats with yeah. your friends. Do you think that you have to throw away your phone? Uh, before fikaing, I, I would imagine yes. I could see phone stacks in play. Yeah, at uh, when you're when you're fikaing, it's got yeah. some Imagine Dragons on there. Ooh, on top respect. of the world is from 2012. That's way earlier than I would think. He's got all the Macklemore hits. He's got same love on there, <laughs> dude. He's got Hallmark is cultured, man. He's got can't hold us, <laughs> thrift shop, radioactive. Radioactive is a great song. Uh, I heard. Of, I heard. I went to uh, breakfast like a week and a half ago, and I, my breakfast was ruined because they were playing a radioactive acoustic version at the diner that I was eating at, and I just couldn't concentrate on my food. Wow. I was so mesmerized by number one, an acoustic version of radioactive existing, and yep. me never hearing it before, and number two, it making a diner playlist. <laughs> That's a wild move. I am lost in this playlist. It just seems like such an emotional roller coaster if you have that on shuffle. Like you're he's, going through yeah, so many yeah. different But like he's like keeping up with Macklemore. So like he's he added a bunch of Macklemore in 2012 and then the next year 2013 uh oh no wait 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 what was the heist? No, the heist was the one that, that was a big one. That was the big one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right, cuz it's got 10,000 hours. So I guess 
he was just continuing to list to check out that album because in 2013 he tapped back in <laughs> and added a few more songs. But he's doing Avicii. He's got Macho Man by the Village People. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> I'm doing that on most of my playlists as well. He's got Happy. Lena Solmark fucking rules. He does rule. I, like, I will be a Lena Solmark fan for my entire I'll life. Like, this interview is going to come out and we're going to be tweeting links to it and everything. And I'm going to be like, if you need proof that Lena Solmark is the fucking coolest skip this shit check out this playlist <laughs> that he has yeah we talk about it in this interview but look at this playlist and not to say that i mean jeremy, of Golding. jeremy swayman rules as well just like yeah th- th- such a such a dude's rock guy swayman uh i think kind of fits but i think both of them fit into pretty much any friend group yeah olmark though has more of the and i love both of them dearly but olmark has more of the like Sir, it is a privilege to be having a conversation <laughs> with you. And uh, who do you think was the the easier audience who laughed more? Uh, Omar's more intimidating. Omar is definitely more intimidating. Like I, like at any point he could have been like, look, like we don't fucking know each other, fellas. <laughs> yeah, like, right? I thought you were gonna t- ask us about hockey or something he has told me that he loves me and right. i still He's am not a, sure yeah uh, like i still feel like at any second he could be well he, he also he has unfollowed me on twitter so like th- our relationship is just like he's keeping me guessing keeping me on our toe on my toes a an important follow-up to this by the way speaking of uh them just absolutely loving uh one or both of us is we saw them in or we saw Swayman in Chicago dipped into the Bruins uh, dressing room for their morning skate and Swayman saw me and then he yes. saw you and it was very much uh, Aldous Snow in uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall when he sees Jonah Hill's character and he's like it's that man <laughs> he saw us and he was like, hey! like it's the fucking two guys that uh, you guys said weird stuff to me <laughs> yeah how do are you, you do you remember what Guaranteed. happened after that too uh, we were ta- talking to Matty Patra yeah and he goes don't talk to those guys oh yeah he was like I don't know what they're goes, fucking stay away from those guys <laughs> when I covered the Bruins I never knew if people like totally paid attention or knew who any of us were like I'll go have like a 20 minute conversation with this person do they have an interest in like what's that guy's story who yeah. is he what's his name I would actually very much appreciate it if after we were like what are our names <laughs> if he was like Truthfully, I was not told that you guys had names. <laughs> Didn't know. I know that the guy next to me was Linus. <laughs> That's all that mattered to him. It's all that him to into, me. Uh, uh, I'm tr- I'm very much trying to appreciate uh, both of these guys as much as I possibly can. Because it does feel like something that I'm going to look back on being like, damn. Remember when we had Linus Olmark and Jeremy Swayman? How much did that fucking rock? I, I know that we're currently in the good old days. Yes, uh, that with, is with what it guys. feels like. And I do love that every time we flex and say that we've got a cool guest, people are like, oh, how'd you do this? <laughs> That's the Twitter voice. Man, I got to say, the fir- oh, he's got Alessia Cara on there. All right, you got to get off just no. playlist monitoring. I think he's got two we're versions. We're podcast here. no. I'm. He's got "Dangerous Woman" by Ariana Grande. Very this cool. This guy was killing it. This guy was. Imagine fucking fikaing with this thing going on. You could have a delicious beverage with your fika, such as Olipop. I'm currently tapped into the cream soda. It's my first of the day. It's late at night. I felt you know what? I didn't have one earlier. Why not have a little night treat? Keep things regular. 24 hours. Olipop is a new kind of soda. It's a prebiotic soda with under 5 grams of sugar and let me tell you, plenty of dietary fiber. So it makes your body feel good. How often can you say that about a can of soda? I'll tell you how often. Every time you're tapping into the cream soda, the root beer, the classic cola, the orange, the grape, the grape, the vanilla, the strawberry strawberry vanilla. vanilla. The ginger ale, lemon lime, just like, oh my gosh, 
What don't they have? They have everything, and you can have it if you go to drinkollipop.com and put in the code CHAOS for 20% off your order. You could also find it in over 22,000 stores across America. And isn't it wild? That, that when I'm not reading and you're it, most tired, I say it, I say it right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not like giggling as I'm doing it. I'm all business. Such you're, as the trick of doing the, the read correctly is just running on food on fumes. Yeah. And I'm running on Olipop and you can too. If you take the time to visit 22,000 <laughs> stores. <laughs> in- uh, America. This is not a line that I expected to ever utter, but you want to talk some Garfield? Yes. Uh, you sent the Garfield trailer my way. Chris Pratt's doing Garfield? Yeah. He's doing and, every animated person. That's right. I thought that his uh, the Italian accent that he put on for Garfield <laughs> was rather distasteful. Very problematic. Extre- he did more of it's it. It's me, at, Garfield. He didn't know, so he didn't do an accent in Mario, and because he'd gotten so much backlash for it. Like, when I would... Uh, I'd go to hockey when I was a kid, and like I said, I wouldn't throw any checks, wasn't throwing the body around. And after on the drive back, my dad would be like, "Hey, like, don't be afraid out there. Like, be aggressive. Just like play your game. It's gonna be okay." I was like, "Yeah," but the thing was, he was driving me uh, to the next thing I had that day, which was youth basketball. So I would show up to youth basketball being like. Throwing the body around? I wasn't aggressive enough. It's time to be aggressive. And I would like take every foul in, it, like, it was just a horrible overcorrection uh, and an inappropriate overcorrection. Chris Pratt got so much guff for not doing the Mario voice. And he's like, you know what? Garfield I'm gonna the, time. I'm going to be the most Italian cat you've ever Let met. Let me in your tap life. into this Italian accent I mean, that I've workshopping. He do be eating lasagna all the time. He do be eating lasagna. Uh, but uh, in it, what's, what's Homeboy's name? His boss, Garfield's boss, his dad, John Cooper. What's <laughs> Sean? What's his dad's name? <laughs> it's I John. don't know. Just you. Is it John? It's John. Boss. Yeah. I always make the joke that John Cooper looks like John from Garfield. Interesting. I always make the joke that Chris Knobloch looks like Lloyd Braun. It's true. But do we have the uh, images or do we have the clip, Sean? I think we have a clip. Hey. Don't need it. Oh yeah. That. So this is the clip of uh, of Garfield. And uh, if you didn't catch at the very beginning of the clip, can we roll it back? Oh, look at this. Look at this producing going on. Rolling it back. Look at that. Hockey gear. Garfield. Hockey movie. So can we now slowly d- drag across the timeline, Sean? Because I want to see exactly what's going on hockey-wise there. So gloves. those are hockey gloves for sure. Yeah. Let's keep it going. Let's drag it. That's a helmet with a, uh, with yep. a shield. Yep. That's a shield. Do we have, uh, what are we He's doing on the pants. bottoms? He's got some hockey pants on. Are we uh, Tate McCraying this or what's, <laughs> what's happening? Does he, uh, do, do we have any pants? He's wearing a yeah, shirt, wearing so it's pants. not the Tate McCray. He's wearing hockey pants. Yeah, he's got gloves, uh, helmet, and pants. Okay, so this makes it now a non-hockey hockey movie. And I think that hockey heads, if you got that AMC A-list or whatever, I would tap into the theater, maybe prove your hockey fandom. Wear your favorite Western Conference shirt. By the way, I'm wearing uh, the Red Wings shirt in solidarity of a team that knows the Western Conference is cool and got dicked around, quite frankly. That's fair. That is fair. I, I mean, Red Wings is a good team to, to be a fan of because then you get to represent. You kind of get to claim both conferences. But they like the coolest Red Wings. I mean, the Red Wings are pretty cool right now. The coolest Red Wings. Like The coolest Red Wings were doing all sorts of stuff in other yeah. places. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the the Garfield thing, uh, for sure, I'm willing to call it a hockey movie. Uh, it's surprising. Didn't know I didn't know that, like, John was about that life. I, I didn't know John's name, famously. Uh, that's true. I wonder if Called we get... his dad. Do you think that we get, like, a hockey... Because I feel like you can't... He just can't pull out, like, a full hockey set without it being explained at some point in the movie. So I feel like we're going to get a hockey scene beyond okay. that in the movie. Do you think that like, uh, John is in a men's league? Yeah. I like that. I think John's definitely in a men's league. I think that... John the, doesn't look like the best The skater. only thing that I know about John is that he's lonely, which would... I think that a, a men's league would do him well. Is like, did Jim Davis like, put that in the strips? Is he like writing... Did he write out the word like lonely? He's all... Yeah, that's why he's obsessed with fucking Garfield, man. Uh, no, I he, don't think Garfield was... Just kind of an asshole. John, so John was always dating. 
Oh. And he, he was never, he was never, uh, none of them were ever sticking. Ah, uh, so I think Seinfeld. That, yeah, that's right. I think that it was a lot less impressive, John's dating life, than Jerry Seinfeld's. John's not going on dates with uh, Mulva. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Man hands. No. Uh, yeah, so wh- uh, what hockey team do you think Garfield would be by the way, of? now, Seinfeld, if, like, the man hands thing happened, it'd be like a brag. What? It'd be like, yo, I just went on a date with someone. They had the coolest hands. They're strong as shit. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's Seinfeld, modern Seinfeld. <laughs> the modern Seinfeld Twitter account. Jerry goes on date with man hands. Congratulates, uh, congratulates her on the hands. What do you think? Uh, what do you think Garfield's favorite team would be? Uh, I don't. I don't know where Garfield resides. It's got. It's got to be the Panthers, right? Because they're, they're, they're the cats. only big cats, right? But Garfield doesn't really identify as a cat. True. Garfield. That motherfucker eats lasagna. Uh, who? Mm, definitely not the Coyotes because he hates dogs. I think that if he played for the Leafs, he'd uh, <laughs> get a. Uh, he'd have a tough time with the media up there. They'd be like, you know, Garfield was eating lasagna. And he would also struggle. He eats lasagna before every game. <laughs> he and then, all- like, the TNT broadcast, Wayne Gretzky would be like, I used to eat lasagna during games. <laughs> I'd eat a whole tray of lasagna, score 50 goals. And everybody in the set is like, holy shit, Wayne. That's incredible. <laughs> Still, have we talked about it on this? No. I talk about it to friends hourly that my favorite part of the TNT broadcast is, like, Sometimes Gretzky is in on the conversation. Sometimes he hangs back. And then like when there's a little break, they're like, Wayne, did you ever eat candy during games? And he's like, oh, yeah, I ate so much candy during games. I ate gummy worms. I ate Sour Patch Kids. I fucked up Mounds Bars. And they're like, and Biz is like, that was, I wish I could do that. That's incredible. Just can't do that in today's game. And Gretzky's like, Wayne's like, I could do it. I could get out there and score 40. Right. Imagine, you think that when he was coaching players, he was like, you That's guys why need to get out of your heads. Here. That, eat a fucking, eat some gummy worms, you that's why, stupid, that's serious. That's why Gretzky flamed out as a coach. He, he was, was like just, fattening them up. Just shoving candy down their throat on the I, bench. If you would eat it, I ate three slices of pizza and then scored goals. Eat it. Uh, you gave me a homework assignment here. You said, uh, "Come up with a list of non-hockey movies that are hockey movies." Yeah, I have a. I have to, I feel pretty good. I, I immediately came up with like five that I that I think are strong. Okay, you want me to go? Sure. I will say that uh, I didn't have time to come up with. A oh, very cool list. I was nice. putting out fires, so uh, right. look, the, the, I'll run this. I'll run my list. If by you take you. the ones that I threw out there, I'll. Uh, this is a v- I'll kill a, you. This is a very immediate list. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> we gotta start recording all our episodes at midnight. <laughs> Going off the deep end. Uh, number one, first one that always jumps to my mind is "She's Out of My League." Oh yeah, that's they, a good one. I wouldn't the, have thought about. They that. do the double date at the uh, at the hockey game with the famously. fake Penguins players. Yep, uh, Jay Baruchel movie mm-hmm. has to have a, a a hockey scene in it. Yep, leads me into my next one. Blackberry, definitely a hockey movie. Blackberry, big time hockey movie. Great movie if you haven't seen. If it, you by haven't the way. seen Blackberry, see Blackberry for sure. Gary Bettman's in it. Not really, but a guy playing Gary Bettman. We want to get. We were going to do this on our last podcast. We want to get the actor who plays the fake Gary Bettman on this show regularly and just bounce ideas to how to better the league off him. I think the best scene in that movie comes inside the NHL's boardroom. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the I'm best. I'm from Waterloo, <laughs> where the vampires hang out. Uh, if you haven't seen so it's Jay Baruchel just crushing it in Jay Baruchel fashion. And Glenn Howerton refusing to be anything but Glenn Howerton. Yeah. As and, and he shouldn't be. You're right. Because he's he bald rocks. and he's screaming. Uh, just Friends? I'll tell you what. I never did that movie. So you know what it is? The, yeah, it's the Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds vehicle. Amy Smart. Yes, mm-hmm. there is a scene on their second date. They play pond hockey, and some crazy shit happens. Ah, so there's a big hockey scene in that movie. Definitely a hockey movie. Uh, that episode of Friends where they take Ross yep. to a uh, to a hockey game, a Rangers game. To, they also take him to the emergency room. That's correct, uh, because he takes a puck in the face. He gets the old Ariana Grande. That's right. Uh, they take him to that game because he's sad. 
because he got divorced. He said that he like got the divorced. Anniversary of his. It's the he, well everything. So he's got mentionitis mm -hmm. with uh, Carol, and he keeps bringing up, "Oh, like this reminds me of her. This, oh, it's a there's a peach pit. She was eating oh, peaches right. this day, and like everything is." And then and on the walk to the game, they they figure he out. He overshares. He overshares. They find out. They that, don't figure it out. They don't want to know. Oh, okay. and he is just like. He won't stop talking about it. That's his uh, his his only goal. Yes, his only tally. Uh, Played for uh, one team his whole career. That's right. Uh, and finally, to round out this list, uh, the Dark Knight. Yes, big time. The Dark Knight's a hockey movie. The fake Batman imposter wears. I'm hockey not wearing pads. hockey pads. And he burns him by saying, "Yeah, he's like nice fucking hockey pads, loser." <laughs> yeah. So definitely Sean, a hockey movie. You seen the Dark Knight? I have not, sadly. Whoa! Uh, no. Yeah, That's I was getting reaction no reaction off you. As, as Pete was saying that, I was getting nothing off yeah, Sean. No, I, I, you haven't seen The Dark no, Knight? No, it's just, I get that reaction every time. Wow. Sean is... So, so you wouldn't know what Batman is if you saw Batman? A picture of Batman, you wouldn't... You'd Kiki Palmer, <laughs> you're saying. Have you seen The <laughs> Batman? I, uh, you yes, know what Batman is? You've seen, seen The Batman, Batman, but not The Dark Knight. Damn. Uh, because The Dark Knight is like a part of a trilogy, so I feel like if I, if I want to watch it, I got to like be prepared to watch all of them whereas the batman i just watched on a flight one time. that's like why i didn't watch soccer for so many years so i was like oh, i'm gonna have to learn a million teams and you can definitely you can definitely hours. drop in on the dark knight tap in. you'll be fine okay. tap into the dark knight you know who doesn't Dude, like the dark Knight? jay barishold does not like does the dark not knight. like the dark knight really yeah not a, not a fan mm. he likes the earlier uh the earlier batman vehicles so the the biggest one is happy gilmore and that one. is borderline like actually a hockey movie even though like once as, as there's less hockey played in that movie than there is in any of the movies that you just named but he identifies as a hockey player he identifies i'm a hockey player and i'm here to play golf mm -hmm. and he wears a bruins jersey yep mr Constantly. gilmore i'm your caddy <laughs> that's right where are you going with my clubs punk throws the kid down the hill gets in a fight with bob barker bob barker may he rest in peace kicks the shit out of out of old happy Lafferty Daniel and, and Gilmore. Gilmore happy. Happy. Um Oppenheimer. Hockey movie. Sean Avery. Give it to me. Sean no. Avery. Yes. Yes. The uh also Patriots Day. Uh Patriots Day. Uh uh Bros. Oh, Bros is definitely a hockey. Did you movie. problematic assholes not see bros? You haven't seen bros? Ooh. Man. You canceled. are going to get your ass kicked by, uh, uh, by there well, is, I can't think of his name, there's uh, Billy a, Eichner. There's a one-night stand in Bros, and uh, he wakes up, and it's he's just in like a, a Henrik fully, Lundqvist, like, it is shrine. A fully New York Rangers shrine, and he's like, you are like 30 years old, and this is your bedroom? It's like, yep, it's, I like the Rangers. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it was a little stereotypical of like hockey fans. The guy was just like grunting, didn't really say any words, just like, hey. Hockey. Hey, I like, I like hockey. It was like the uh, the the UC Soros. That's exactly what I was commercial. thinking. No goals. No goals. Uh, no you goals. know what my goal is? To one day make a playlist as good as this. This guy has got, I don't even know who some of these people are. He's got Don't Let Me Down by the Chainsmokers on there. I know that one. He's got uh, BB Rexa. He's got more Chainsmokers. It's incredible. What other, do you, do you have any more? No, uh, that was my list. Any more? Fake hockey movies that are kind of um, hockey. Not a movie, but Drive to Survive, the F one series. On multiple in multiple situations, they show the principal of McLaren playing in his like men's league. Ah, oh. Um, so there's a few hockey episodes of that F one show. I had another one, I forgot it. Too late. Uh, you know what is a hockey movie? Is that uh, Lil Wayne song where he references the Boston Bruins? You know what I'm uh, talking about? No, I do not. I was gonna, but that reminded me of I don't know why, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, yes, that's Alan a Ruck movie for sure. Yeah, Alan Ruck wears the Gordy Howe Gordy jersey. Howe Huge jersey. Movie. Uh, how about um, the uh, shoot? There's that one episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, Incredible. Where, yes. I watched that episode yep. recently. Yep. Where <laughs> so he good. does the uh, the Flyers, the yeah, Flyers yeah, game. Yeah. Yeah. He passes out. Yeah. He doesn't want to look like a jabroni. Yeah. Spoiler alert. He ends up looking like the biggest jabroni. <laughs> it's like, oh, did I did I do it? Did I make it? No, you fell down like immediately. <laughs> oh, what about all the um what the Jason movies? Yeah. Hockey uh, masks are in play. Hmm. 
I think I need a little bit more. They never play pond hockey. Camp Crystal Lake, not a single pond hockey at Camp Crystal Lake. Mm. Come on. You were saying, so when we were talking about Happy Gilmore earlier, I said Happy Gilmore is more of a hockey movie than Miracle, which do it that yeah. what you will. It's a hot take, folks. Because Miracle is a, a historical drama. Yeah, you it's said not, because like Miracle isn't even a hockey movie. It's more about the political, the geopolitical situation of the late 80s than it is. I think that's when it was, right? Listen to our guy. Oh. He's saying geopolitical. This, yeah. is, this conversation is going to be drive, <laughs> driving me nuts. No, hell yeah. Are you a why? Do you love Miracle? Yes. Oh, I think I've I mean, only I, seen I, it. In, in real life. I do love Miracle. I yeah. saw it and it was like, it's an incredible Disney movie. It's an incredible movie. Yeah, I, I, I don't know it well enough to... Uh, it's an incredible again. movie. Have you ever been to Lake so Placid? So like that, I'd heard things from people who played for him and they were like, they were kind of glorifying that he could maybe not be the uh, most sensible coach, but they were like dressing it up to be like, and look. He's an American hero. Because he did that, <laughs> Mike Aruzzi, Yoni scored a goal. Hell yeah. Hey, uh... Friends, by the way, said the Friends episode, the hockey Friends episode. People forget the Jim Craig in uh, Oh, the Miracle right. had an tag. arc on Friends. He played uh, Rachel's love interest, wow. Tag, because Rachel was being very unprofessional and hired a guy because she wanted to sleep with him, and then she started sleeping with him. <laughs> you know, outrageously classic boss behavior. Cl I mean. <laughs> If the, that that's like the that's like four hundredth on the list of shit that they did in Friends that you're like, oh, <laughs> not amazing. Oh, Ross, Ross, pretty problematic. Not a, not as bad a friend as Joey, but Ross had his issues. Don't be lame though, and just say that Ross is the worst Friends character. That's the obvious. That's what everybody says. He's not. Joey's worse. Phoebe might be a little worse. Ross isn't that bad. He's a bad guy for sure, but they're all horrible people. Uh, what do you think of the Carolina Hurricanes tapping back into the Hartford Whalers aesthetic? I feel like uh, it's an hourly conversation of, you're not allowed. Oh, how could you take the team and move them? And now you're going to wear their thing. Oh, how could you do it? I I still st I still believe that the Hurricanes shouldn't be wearing the Whalers jerseys, but... I'm not as passionate about it as I was a few years exact ago. Same. It, they've worn me down. They do it at like at least once every year now. They keep bringing them out, and you know, I I understand it. Like, part of me is happy that the Whalers still exist in some capacity in today's NHL. I'm happy. Like, obviously, the logo rocks. The jerseys rock. I get happy every time I see them. But also, part of me does feel like it's a little bit dirty kind of digging up a grave for financial purposes so that the the, uh, the Hurricanes can act like they're cool yeah. a couple times a year. I know they're only doing it once this year. But it it's still I feel like teams should get to should get to remain in the places where they were left uh and and not be like have their their grave dug up at in a new location. Okay, so I'm 100% I used to be like yeah, kind of wrinkle my nose at it a little bit. I'm in. I love it. Just because it's the 4,000th most annoying thing the Hurricanes <laughs> do. Like it's a, this doesn't even register on like the things that the Hurricanes do that A, piss people off and or B, should piss people off. Like it's There's a region that should be upset about this that the whole hockey world, every time they see this, is like, how dare you? You're not allowed to do this. It's like you fucking live in Jacksonville. You are nowhere near this issue. Keep quiet. Can I you do make it? a good point, though, that like it, we should be encouraging the Hurricanes to act like anybody else other than the Hurricanes. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, can I just say that a like Connor Hellebuck Atlanta Thrashers jersey in, in the figure hat would go, would go insane? Dumb. Like, I think that would go insane. That would be great. I mean, I used to, uh, I don't know why I almost did this years ago. I wanted to get a, I loved the Warriors. Oh, I, I I do love the Warriors jerseys and everything. But like once the Warriors became a dynasty, you're not going to get a bunch of Warriors stuff. And my favorite NBA player was Kyrie Irving. Loved the Warriors jerseys. And I don't know if this was an inebriated moment, but I was like, why the fuck can't I just support all the shit I like? 
and get a Kyrie Irving Warriors Brother, jersey. you are speaking my language. You know how hard I tried when I was a kid to get a Derek Jeter Boston Red Sox jersey? Oh, no. Which is like <laughs> the craziest thing ever, but yeah, I, tried, I tried hard. A Yo, true if you could have done that, everybody in the 90s would have gotten like uh, Bernie Williams Red Sox jerseys. Oh, yeah. Or like Canadians fans would get Patrice Bergeron Canadians jerseys. Well, Just I mean, you should be it. allowed to because you you, you get to your have, money. You get to root for the Eastern Conference. You're just a fan of the Eastern Conference. I'm just a fan of the American League. What okay. do you want from me? So here's what we do: we get the actor who played Gary Bettman on to be like, "Hi, please lift the NHL shop uh, rules." There's a ban on. I it's very confusing, but I'm trying to get a Connor Hellebuck Kings jersey <laughs> and. It's being all screwy. Could you please fix that? And he'll be like, I'm a, an actor that was an in actor. whatever. I'll be like, yeah, 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 Blackbird. You played Gary Bettman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, because we're not live we uh, and we have a TV in front of our clock, we don't know how long we've been going, but we're for sure done with this podcast. We'll talk to you on Wednesday. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and all the places where you can subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts. Rawr. Do that now. Bye. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor. 